Gentlemen, good to have you. Welcome to an episode where we're going to be discussing the intricacies of decentralization, cryptocurrency. We're going to be talking about the importance of building in a censorship-free ecosystem, whether it's communication, whether it's finance, whether it's your ability to transact. Gentlemen, today we are with Ian from Ton Ventures and Mass from Stonify. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Now, we have the Ethereum ETF that just got approved. So this is good news, really good news, because now we have big organizations, big banks, big corporations looking at crypto and taking it seriously. What are your first impressions? I think it's been a huge benefit for crypto as an asset class, um, where I think kind of Ton and Telegram together fall is crypto as a technology, though. Mm. Um, so I think it's a big win for the you know, class in general. Um, but I do think the value prop of, of Ton and Telegram is adjacent, but equally powerful. I mean, I think even, and I think I was discussing this yesterday uh, on a live stream, we were talking about the legitimization of how Ton went about the refund and then kind of like the fair launch and being able to mine tokens and how there could be a potential in the future where uh, Ton actually enters you know, legal jurisdiction and can actually have their own ETF. Solana ETF is in conversation as well. So I think, like you said, this opens up a really big horizon for all crypto in general, legitimizes the entire asset class. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's, it's brilliant news. Um, I think it's come a lot quicker than people were thinking a few months ago. I don't think it's going to be instant. I think, as we saw with the Bitcoin ETF, it's going to take a bit of time. I think it gets to the point where you need approval and like, having thoughts about it, and then you're going to start seeing the inflows that are coming in. But look, it's, it's great news for the ecosystem. It's great news for crypto. It's great news for all those people that have been saying it's going to come. Um, and yeah, as you said, opening up a huge amount of doors for you know Solana, Ton, and a few other, other cryptos that are going to be coming in and get the average user being able to get it in their pensions in that side or their, their uh, portfolios. And what happens during bull runs is there's always kind of the narrative that pushes the price up. In this case, we had Bitcoin ETF, Ethereum ETF. But during the bear market, we actually see how a lot of these projects and ecosystems, they don't have a community. They don't have an infrastructure. They don't have something that's bear market proof, which is what attracted me to Ton. Mm. Right? You have the Telegram platform that's kind of the foundational communication ecosystem and social media kind of experience that users have. Now we just crossed 950 million users. Talk to me about your perspective on Ton. Why are you bullish on it? Bear market proof resilience. It's interesting that you mentioned kind of, um, you know, price. And the best way to build a community is to uh, make your community members money, right? Mm. So you'll see that these communities are extremely strong in bull markets. But as you noted, uh, they weaken significantly in bear markets. Now, I think the value proposition of something like Ton and, and Telegram is that even in these bear market cycles, people can build sustainable Web3 businesses on Ton using Telegram Social Graph. So even in, in bear market cycles, you'll still see people you know, doing great go-to-markets, leveraging Telegram App Center, um, you know, leveraging Telegram ads, leveraging KOL and referral links, uh, using monetization like channel monetization to actually create uh, you know, feedback loops where where money and profit is coming back into their community, coming back into their token. Um, so that's what I think the superpower of Tana Telegram is. You can build sustainable Web3 businesses um, and you have access to a social graph to do it. And there's proof of concept now. There's already some of these mini apps or some of these tap turns that are generating real revenue. They're making money already. Yeah. Amazing. Those, in, in my opinion, what those mini apps are is a... Um, People are trying to figure out the best way to go to market in Telegram and on Taunt, right? So there's like four stages of what these um, mini apps like Cadison or TapSwap or Hamster Combat, these type of folks are doing, right? Number one, they're basically acquiring users, you know, through ref links and this type of stuff. Uh, two, engaging users. And they found that the easiest way to do this is basically through, you know, tappers, but uh, or emerge games like Cadison. It's getting more complicated over time. And then live ops, daily check-ins, um, group squads, things like this, right? Then that moves on to monetization, telegram ads, referral links, quests. And then I think where the, the design space is where people are starting to think differently is how the fourth part of this is how do you sustain and retain your user base? Mm. How do you get a sustainable flow of income coming into your community, coming into your product? Some people will do that by opt-in data. Some people will do that by 
launching Telegram mini app platforms. Some people will do that by offering SDKs. Um, so those are great proof of concepts for how to successfully go to market in Telegram time. I tell you what's really going to be interesting. I don't know, remember when the iPhone got released and you just had the basic, like the maps, the camera. So basically when the iPhone came out, you, um, it was like all the external stuff you had could be then on a phone. And, you know, we didn't probably see anything that really utilized what the iPhone could do probably until like Uber many years later. And it's like, imagine you couldn't do Uber not on a mobile phone. It'd be like near impossible. Imagine doing it in this venue. It's like, oh, oh he's down the road, you know. <laughs> I, I don't think we're anywhere near close to seeing the power of Ton, Telegram and what can be done. And I think maybe like if there is a bear run, this is where we're going to see it. You know, in a couple of years down the line, like I've been having people telling me like they've got embedded videos, adding Ton within there, maybe buying product placement. The possibilities is so, so, so huge. And I don't think anyone really has grasped how big this can be. Look, Telegram, it's everyone in crypto is on Telegram. There is no other, there's no other place where you have everyone that's on crypto. I go to conferences. Where does everyone talk on conferences? Yeah, just go on Telegram. Yeah, well, do, I don't know. You know what? You're, you're a crypto noob if you don't have your QR code. You know, like you go around, oh, here's my Telegram. You know, that's what people are doing. It's your only, it's your only place where if you're on crypto, you're on Telegram. Um, so I, I, you know what? I would argue... Maybe six months ago, you know, we needed, Ton needed Telegram. I think now Ton is making Telegram sticky. You know, I'm spending a lot more 100%. time. You know, like... I mean, yeah, you're, you're 100% right. You're just talking about 95% of people are just using one feature, which is the talking feature. Yeah. That's the bare minimum. I already started categorizing folders at the yeah. top and I'm like, yo, this is getting <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like this is getting actually really good. Yeah. So once again, the things that are being built upon it are insane. You know what it reminds me of? When you go on the app store and you see these like Asian games yeah. that people invest thousands of hours on that you develop the character, yeah. you get the loot, you, you farm tokens, but you don't get, there's no real world value yeah, yeah. attached to that joy that pleasure that game with ton right which is the only other place where you don't have to download a third party app another game it already exists natively where you are communicating i think that as games get more intricate i think we're just seeing the basics of it this you know what this feels like 2017 icos where you had to send money to, yeah. to a metamask wallet and you would get it back type thing Maybe. Yeah. That, that's that's what it felt like <laughs> but that's what what it feels like right now with these games, with these experiences, I feel like in the next three, four, five years, we're going to see crazy things. Yeah, totally. I was, um, I was at a conference the other, the other week, ECC, and I was having game developers come to me and go, oh, where is this? And this? Oh, God, can't it just be on Telegram now? Like, I'm just like, gaming on Telegram is so easy. You can just open up, load it up, rather than do this. And we're just going to be seeing, this is just the start. This is just the evolution of actually games next level um, going on there. Games are... Um... So the games in Telegram are HTML5 games. Um, and that's important because WeChat mini app games yeah. are also HTML5 games. Um, so now you have this huge talent pool of, you know, greater China development talent um, who's super well versed in like launching mini apps and, and kind of those game loop cycles that now has an alternative place to launch. So as WeChat becomes harder to monetize or becomes more saturated, uh, there's kind of higher compliance costs related to that you see a lot of developers being like, okay, well, why don't we launch our games on Telegram then? And through a Telegram mini app. And then the next natural state is kind of, okay, now we've launched our game as a Telegram mini app. Why don't we add some Web3 features to it? Uh, I think this is what Cadison, like took advantage of. I think they had $14 million of revenue in four months. Yeah, it's crazy. Because essentially the mini app is top of the funnel. And then below that, you know, people add these Web3 gamification features. 